Hey guys, I keep seeing everything um, on here about ancestry and I'm 15% this nationality and X percent that nationality and I'm by no means a genetic expert, but I do know a little bit and there's some people that know a little bit more on um, this page. So I did do human evolutionary theory, uh, early humanity, civilization, stuff like that in the university. So first thing, you can't test for percentage of nationality. The reason being, nationalities are not distinct ethnic enclaves. Nationalities are not their own race. They are not their imaginary borders that mankind's put there. Especially when you see like an American testing, where your family came from might actually not even be in the country that you think you uh, descended from anymore. So that's, that's first. Uh, when we're testing genetics, we're not testing for nationalities, and that's a big problem. That's why a lot of uh, people in the scientific community do not like Ancestry.com, because you're actually not testing for nationality. You're testing for genetic mutations, alleles, and app groups. Um, also, there is no governing body <clears throat> over the genetic testing, so they can really say anything they want. The way they're putting you into another national group is they have reference populations, so your similarity to that reference population. So if they say you're 50% German, they're testing you against you know a small subsection of the German uh, nationality, which is really a misnomer as well because up until 1871, a place like Germany was, I don't know, over 100 different uh, states. Bavaria is one of the oldest kingdoms in Europe, and why would the people in Bavaria share the same genetic traits as the people in Schleswig-Holstein, which was part of Denmark up until the 1860s? So that's some stuff to think about. Also, there's something called uh, genetic determination, right? And shared inheritance. The genetic Eve and genetic Adam, which are the people that every single man is in, and woman to alive today are descended from, are believed to, I think, in the genetic Eve aspect born 120,000 years ago in Africa and genetic Adam about 60,000 years ago. But if you look at um, the way people are related, you don't have to be descended from somebody to be related to someone. If you go back 30, only 30 generations, it's roughly 900 years, your relations would be 1.0 billion people in the world. At that time period, there wasn't even that many people alive. So 30 generations ago, 30 generations ago, you related to every single person. So when you're saying you're related to Ragnar or, or whoever else or Rollo, yeah, everybody is. Everybody is. Even someone from East Asia. Um, there really doesn't exist any ethnic groups or any populations of humans that are separated away from other populations. The, for example, uh, Denisovian and Neanderthal blood, right? If you're a modern human today, and you live anywhere outside of Sub-Saharan Africa, which is where uh, they developed, where modern humans developed, you will contain at least some Denisovian and some Neanderthal blood. That's proven. So if you're from Europe, you are definitely related to everybody else alive in Europe now today uh, by 30 generations. So then you can also look at something, uh, we, we look at genetic mutations, right? And that's how you know. Like, there's no way, there's no way that one mutation being prevalent in one country or another allows you to know where you're from. For example, my R132B, I believe, mutation is present in 75% of all men in Iceland, even though I've never been to Iceland. It's also present in 2% of all men in Vietnam. So, or even though no one of my family has been to Iceland. So by testing it, and me showing up, that, that does not, that should not be an indicator for nationality. I know where my family came from. It just so happens that possibly the people that settled Iceland have a shared inheritance with me. For example, I think um, Blue Eyes has developed out of mutations twice, maybe three times across humanity. So even in a, a country, say, of Germany with 90 million people or what have you, 80 million people, both of those, or all three of those, genetic mutations from blue eyes exist. I'm sure in certain areas, one is more common than the other. But 
to say that you are X amount German versus X amount Scandinavian, well, if Germany is its own separate ethnic group, but the Germanic tribes only diverged with the Scandinavian Germanic tribes about 200 years prior, then how is all of Scandinavia considered one thing? Obviously, they would all be separate too. But the subset and the reference populations aren't big enough. If anywhere uh, had distinct ethnic properties for nations, it would be somewhere like in Sweden and Norway where an isolated population continued to use runes in Old Norse up until the 1900s. Isolation is the only thing that can breed difference. So keep in mind, when you're saying these things and when ancestry is finding out, they're not finding out anything about your nationality. What they're finding out is your genetic mutations. Your genetic mutations do make you you. That's what gives me this color of skin, this color of facial hair, this color of eyes. And that's a big part of who I am. Dig deeper. Don't let them tell you your nationality. I mean, I'm from the Baltic coast of Germany, which would make me very in line to being, um, actually my closest reference nation would be Denmark. But Iceland, all the men there had the same genetic traits as I do. So keep that in mind. It's all genetic mutation. Countries are not distinct from each other. They're all the same race. You know, humanity is one species. So you can't look at an imaginary border on a paper and, and allow that to influence it. And also, we are all related to everyone. So and please don't tell me you're related to Odin or Thor or anything like that, because they're mythological beings, mythological men that never existed in the real world. With, and without some way to test for them genetically, like how are you know you're related to Ragnar? Do we have Ragnar's bones? Are we able to test for his genetic mutation? No, it's a bunch of hearsay. People that were supposedly his great-grandsons and great-great-grandsons. Well, if we know anything, there's something called personal myth. And personal myth is what each person comes up with about their own family history. And it's more often than not wrong. Hope this taught you a little bit of something. I know I'm a little rambling. I should have actually probably wrote down some notes. But um, 30 generations ago, we're all related.